The other day, my wife shared a meme on Facebook. I'm, I'm sorry, the pandemic has really whittled down my ability to give these diatribes a setting, so that's it, you know. But but she shares this post about the sins of left-handedness. Uh, it's, it's actually the cover of a book from 1935 called The Prevention and Correction of Left-Handedness in Children by J.W. Conway. It's a real book. I double-checked it. It's like 39 pages long, and it instructs teachers and parents on how to correct for the disability of coloring with the wrong hand. And look, as anachronistic as that might seem to you, she dealt with this shit. Lucinda's a lefty, and when she was a kid, she had more than one teacher that forced her to use her right hand in class. And when she didn't, they'd, they'd take a ruler to her fucking knuckles. And judging by the responses on her Facebook post, she wasn't alone exactly. Of course, I mean, this is all shit we know, right? It's often trotted out as a real life sneeches with stars example to point out how arbitrary bigotry is. The fact that sinister comes from the Latin for left, the way that left handedness has been used as a marker for Satanism and witchcraft at various points in history. It's something that has existed throughout written history to some degree and is still the norm today, at least in a few countries. Right. Like, it, it seems out of place in modern day America, but it wasn't out of place when my dad was a kid. And it wasn't all the way gone by the time my wife was a kid. Of course, along the way, you know, the idea evolved a bit. Eventually, the literal association with the devil was de-emphasized, but people still felt like there was something wrong with those motherfuckers, those lefty sons of bitches. Instead of a sign of devilry, it evolved into a disability. To be clear, though, the people studying this shit weren't at a loss for data to back them up. I mean, left-handed people have shorter life expectancies than right-handed people. There must be something wrong with them, right? Of course, a lot of that's because they're forced to move through life in a world designed for right-handed people, and that predates the regular use of scissors. I mean, the, the, the phalanx is designed for a right-handed spearman. The staircase is designed for a right-handed swordsman. But when you're not seeking an alternative explanation, you don't find one. So all of that was ignored in favor of the solution they'd already decided on, hand conversion therapy. The key, though, is that none of the shit that Christianity condemns today is any less arbitrary than this. Their misogyny, their homophobia, their transphobia, their tirades against abortion, they're all rooted in the same random happenstance that had them trying to beat the left-handedness out of their children. If anything, the other things are more arbitrary since the Bible spends a lot more time expressing a preference for righties than it does condemning gayness or, fuck, abortion never even comes up. I mean, at least not in a don't do this kind of way. The misogyny is a theme so pervasive that it could damn near be called the plot. But if you're using the Bible as your guide, the other stuff is pretty minor compared to the sin of left handedness. Look, there are two types of religious morality. The better one of the two is the bullshit attempts to retrofit modern morals into the scripture. The Bible is like most holy books in that you can pluck whatever the hell you want out of there if you're willing to ignore all the shit that comes before and after your sentence of choice. So if you just want a Jesus that supports trans rights and abortion access and gay marriage, you can find one in there. If you honestly assess what this Jesus character in this book is all about, you're never going to land on that. But if you're willing to ignore all of that shit, you can pound the square nail into the round stigmata or whatever. Of course, in so doing, you're elevating the words of a guy who doesn't actually think the thing that you're trying to sell. So it's a roundabout way of getting morals. And and even if you succeed, all you've done is reset the clock on antiquation of your morality. Something tells me that we haven't yet reached peak morality as a species. So whatever you manage now is just going to need reinterpretation down the line and probably inhibit moral growth in between. And that's the better type of religious morality. The other type is the arbitrary shit that we spend most of this show dealing with. You know, sometimes it comes from the same process. You start with your biases and then you just cherry pick the justifications. But other times it's just an outgrowth of the arbitrary nature of books written hundreds of years ago from cultures long dead. But most of the time, it's just a self-reinforcing cycle. And it's pointless to try to figure out who's eating whose tail. Because when it comes to hatred, religion is often both the cause and the effect.